make a video separate from this, kind of talking about what classifies a festival, because there's a lot of festivals that are happening indoors now, festivals that are only happening for one day, festivals that are only happening with one stage, and it really kind of makes me question what classifies a festival, and are we like watering down the term festival and making it more attractive? So we're going to talk about that in a separate video that I'm probably going to be filming also today. Can I get a year? Festival Finesse. Finesse Gang, can I get a year? What's good, Finesse Gang? Thank you guys for tuning in once again. For those of you who are new here, welcome. I'm the Festival Finesse. This is my channel, the channel that revolves around music festivals like Lost Lands. <laughs> following me on a festival for the day, you're probably following me on a show in New York City for the night. <laughs> if you're not following me on a short festival for the day, you are probably sitting with me here at this desk getting life hacks, trick tips, any words of advice that I can give to you guys to make sure you have the best festival going experience possible. Boom. First try on the intro, what the fuck is good? So if you guys have been following the channel, you may have seen the video I posted a couple days ago talking about the different types of live music going experiences. And in that video, I talk about camping festivals versus city festivals. There's two different types of festivals. You have city festivals, then you have camping festivals. City festivals obviously happen in, in urban areas, in cities like Moonrise or Ultra or EDC Las Vegas even. Those are city festivals. You, you get a hotel, there isn't really any camping, but camping festivals usually happen in more rural areas and you're farther away from home, you're farther away from civilization there's no cell service you're there for three days that is really a different type of uh, environment because that really is kind of unattractive to many people nowadays everybody wants to be with their phones and service and running water and electricity and you don't have that when you're at a camping festival i feel like every festival has you know like five main qualities that give it that festival status and those five points are happening over the course of multiple days having multiple stages having multiple artists having multiple vendors and being outside so we're going to talk about some festivals that don't do these things and, uh, you know, hopefully we can get some insight on people that have been to them and just, you know, just, just talk, you know, it's really, it's really nothing personal. We're just here to talk about different types of festivals and really see the different things that are happening and evolving in the scene and how people are doing things differently and really kind of breaking ground. So let's look into these festivals that are doing things differently and really kind of stepping out of the box, but still calling themselves a festival. So going off of the first part I mentioned, however, to take place over the course of multiple days, I have recently been to a single day festival, which really kind of also inspired me to make this video, and that was High Caliber Fest. Wow. So it is 420. We are out here. And this is literally like, it is a full blown battleship. This is about to be lit. And High Caliber Fest was probably one of the first single day events that I went to that was called a festival. And I really felt that it captured that festival vibe. And it was actually a really good one day festival. The next one that came to mind is Elements Festival in NYC. And uh, that is a single day event that I've never been to, but definitely a festival. I'm pretty sure it's held the same place like Governor's Ball or Izu is one of those islands, I think. Never been, not too sure. Last year, Bass Nectar played there, I'm pretty sure. And uh, Subtronics, and that, that has some cool names on there. So uh, that is one that comes to mind for a single day festival. I think that one also can kind of fall into the festival category. It does a well enough job, but um, two days would be sicker, I think. Following that, some other single day festivals that I just kind of researched were Flow Festival and Global Fest. The last one that I want to talk about is one that happened kind of over here in the area. It was Heavy Fest. Happened at the Palladium, which I just recently been to um, for Ganja White Night. <laughs> So for Heavy Fest, uh, Brie had actually won, and she went with a couple of her homies, and uh, it was a mesh of dubstep, metal, and hip-hop. So they had, like, Sullivan King, Squanto, Yuki, The Underachievers, uh, Chris Webby was there, like, Asking Alexandria, like, it was, it was really kind of crazy. But it happened, it was one day, it happened inside, and uh, that definitely would not be something I would have called a festival, because just, I've been to the Palladium, and it really does not have that festival, it's just not a festival vibe, it's very tight, it's very closed. And, you know, it's just a bunch of artists going one after the other on one. St Actually, I heard there was two stages in there. It was one upstairs and one downstairs. But uh, that's almost like kind of saying Webster Hall is then a festival because it has three three levels. You know, it's just it's just a concert hall. But uh, the idea is cool, making it, you know, an indoor, you know, being able to go. That's the one thing I hate is just standing there the whole time and just being in the kind of wild. Like, I need to move around and just wander. So segueing into our next category, we're going to talk about festivals that happen inside. 
and some festivals that come to mind. Another one that just recently happened, Hijinx Festival. I heard that one really well. I made a couple videos talking about Hijinx, and I really heard only good things, and there were no complaints. So shout out to Hijinx. I hope I didn't offend anybody in my videos. Another big one that comes to mind is Snowda, which I believe happens in Minnesota, and uh, Skrillex played that, which was huge. And uh, another one is Decadence in Arizona. These are New Year's Eve events, kind of like the New Year's Eve weekend, so they have to be, they happen in December. So, you know, it might be a little cold, chilly, they happen indoors, and uh, I can respect that, you know, I get it, but I wouldn't necessarily call it a festival, especially if it only happens for um, one day. I want to give a quick, like, disclaimer, because a lot of people brought this one up, because when I said, can you name a festival that is one stage, takes place indoors, and is only one day, people kept saying Rampage, because it qualified, it falls into all three categories, but when you Google Rampage Festival, their website, the headline, it says it's the world's biggest dubstep and drum and bass party. It is not a festival, it is a party. And seeing that really kind of made me be like, okay, there is a difference, and they understand it's not a festival. So that's why I wanted to make this video, and really kind of delve into the weird kind of festival things that make a festival a festival. Some other festivals that happen indoors are Wobble Land and Lights All Night. And uh, Wobble Land is looking really stacked. But uh, I'd be interested to see this. The multiple stages is really where it kind of gets to me. That's going to be the next one we're talking about. The biggest festival that I would call a festival that had one stage is Base Canyon. And again, that is probably the most groundbreaking one because it was such a success. And I only heard good things. And it was probably one of the only festivals I could go to that was one stage and just enjoy myself there because of all the crazy acts that are just flooding the stage throughout the day. Following that, Hijinx was also only one stage. So Hijinx was a two-day festival that happened indoors. That was only one stage. And it probably had about maybe seven acts per day. I, mean, I believe it started at 5 o'clock. Bass Nectar headline, so that was a huge plus for them. Like I said, Rampage, one stage. NYE 360, Bass Nectar, is that a festival? Is that an event? Is that a party? Is that a show? Another one of those touchy subjects because he brings in a ginormous crowd. And he has multiple artists, but I don't know how many artists they are. And it's, you know, again, it's one of those, if it starts at 5 o'clock type deal, 6 o'clock, like, it might fall into that festival category if it has more than one stage. It's always going to fall into a festival if it has all five. If it doesn't have all five of those points, that's where it starts getting you know, into that gray area. So I'm not talking about vendors. Vendors are not like crucial to a festival really for me, but I feel like they add to the experience and like you don't go to a concert or to a show or, you know, a rave and see vendors. You know what I'm saying? You just go for the music. I feel like the festivals, you go for more than the music. You go for the experience. You go to, you know, you just go for different things. You go to see different things, experience art. And, you know, it's just, it wraps up more than just one thing. It's not all about the music when it comes to a festival. There, there's there's a vibe to it. And I feel like, you know, vendor villages, you know, those, those vendor spots, those little markets in the festival are just prime for being able to discover new things and new products and new brands. And, you know, I really think it helps add to the experience. Not something that is crucial, but I think, you know, it really kind of also helps draw the line between a show or event and a festival. And just having a little market to buy, sell, and trade, you know? And just help expose and network and just, you know, be, and just continue fucking flourishing positivity. The big one for me is being outdoors. And I don't, I really can't consider it a festival if it's not outdoors because festivals are supposed to be free and open. And I can't feel free and open in a warehouse, you know? I want to be able to move around and just like the sunlight, you know, and just being, I feel like if I was just in dark all night, I would feel like I was in a rave and just, you know, like at a warehouse party all night. And it wouldn't, it's not really a festival, you know? I feel like Hijinx is more of a party, almost like a weekend party. Or, you know, I like the Bad Decent Block Party. That's a cool concept, a two day thing. Friday, Saturday, you just go for the day. And, uh, you know, summer stage in Central Park, those day events. I think there's just so many, uh, there's so many different types of events and there's so many different qualifications and characteristics. It's hard to really kind of target just one. Another thing that I kind of also took into consideration is wristbands, like to production. Like most festivals will give you a wristband. And if they're not giving you one of those, if they're not giving you one of these wristbands, then they are probably a smaller scale festival, which is fine. You know, I'm not going to bash anyone new. Most festivals will give you this for multiple days. You can go anywhere in the festival and it really kind of makes things easy. You know, I, I was going through my bag and I found my high caliber ticket and I was like, hmm, a festival giving out a ticket. Hard copy, what's up? Thank you, thank you. And you know, High Calibre was talking about making it two days, and if they did make it two days, boom, instantly, now you're, now you're a festival, you know what I'm saying? So, I really think you kind of have to earn the term festival, you know? You can't just hop into the market, you know, into the stream of events and be like, I'm a festival because I have multiple stages and multiple artists, even though I'm only one day. You know, many, many events happen one day, and I have multiple artists, but they don't call themselves festivals. So, that is just something that I think, and it's kind of my opinion. I'm very interested to see what you guys have to say. I'm very interested to see what you guys consider festivals, and how you guys think about indoor festivals, and festivals that are only one day, and festivals that only have one stage. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Thank you guys for watching up until this point. 
I'm the Festival Finesser, and I'll see you guys for my festival tips, tricks, and vlogs. Peace. New Jersey, can I get a year?